Hey guys. Hold on. Um, can you guys hear me? Yeah. yeah. Hey, Gavin. Um, Hey, Ben. Okay. Oh, Chris, good. You're able to join this one. Yeah. Good. All right, so I have Gavin. And Logan and Ben. I'm going to wait a little bit to see who else comes in. Hey, Gavin. What's up? What's up? What's up? <laughs> Well, it may just be the five of us. What do you mean five? Who do you see? I see Chris and Logan. And Ben oh is on there too. Do you see the one that says Dorothea Cheatley? Dorothy. <laughs> ben. Yeah. We can't see you? Yeah. Gavin, go back on video. Thank you. Dang, okay. My bad. <laughs> oh, Logan, that's a really cool background. What is that? It's uh, Diamond City and from Fallout 4. Huh. It was the old baseball, it's an old baseball stadium that became like a town. Ah. Fun fact, the real stadium that this was made after, my grandfather helped paint the walls. Where is it? In, uh, Boston. Fenway Park? Yes, Fenway Park. Boston. He helped paint Fenway? Yes, at least that's what my mom told me. Wow, that's pretty amazing. Yeah. All right, has everybody read the chapters for today? Chapters two and three? Yes, we have. Yeah. Anybody struggling with it? Really? You can follow it? 
Yeah. Ben, how about you? I know we can't see you, but I'm still going to involve you. What? How are you doing with the reading? Are you reading it? I'm listening to it. Oh, okay. So you're, that's fine. You're listening to it. Do you understand it? Not really. Well, you missed the meeting last week, and that was really yeah. foundational to anybody that missed last week because it explained everything that that's, this whole thing is based on. So let me recap that for you guys. Who wasn't at the meeting last week? Chris? Yeah. Gavin? Ben? Logan, you were here, right? Yeah, I was here. Okay. <clears throat> so this is the story of a plane crash. A bunch of boys from a school in England, their plane crashes. We, at the beginning, don't know why, but we soon find out that it had been shot down because it's during World War II. No adults survive, so it's all boys and their ages, six to 12. And so they have to figure out how to survive. <clears throat> and the big thing, the theme that's going on in this book is everybody, you, me, the boys in the story, have the ability to either be civilized or the ability to go savage. And so the book is seeing in this extreme situation, what's going to come out of people? How are they going to handle it? Will different people <coughs> handle it differently? Let me let some other people in. May I uh, mention the chapter two about something that happened? Well, not yet, because I want to finish giving them a, a basis for it, okay? Okay, I can wait. All right, so... From what you guys have read, has it, does that make sense so far? Like, did you understand that they were, I'm talking to the people who just joined, I'm talking to the people who weren't in the meeting last week that missed the foundation. So those of you who weren't there last week but have been reading, does it make sense now that they're in a plane crash and they're, they got to figure out how to survive? Mm -hmm. All right. So we have three main characters that come up right away. Ralph, and Ralph is the one that, ends up getting elected the leader. And he's the one that has the conch shell that he uses to call the meetings. And the conch shell, like this book is very, very packed with symbolism. So the conch shell symbolizes civilization because it's a way to have meetings and to have order. Okay, so that the, the existence of that conch shell means something more than just a way to call people to a meeting. So Ralph uh, calls people to the, you know, kind of he finds that, he blows through it, and it makes this big sound on the island. And whoever is on the island, they hear it, and they come, they come together for the first time. So the other main character at the very beginning with Ralph is named Piggy. And Piggy is called that because he's fat, and he was called that by his other students at the school that he was in in England, and he hates that name. Piggy is kind of um, frumpy and wears glasses, and he symbolizes <clears throat> science and intellectualism in this book, okay? The fact that he has on glasses means something. It's, he symbolizes reasoning and science and intellect. And then the other main character that comes up in chapter one is named Jack. And Jack has a bunch of boys with him that, and they're all dressed in choir robes. And they're obviously they were part of the choir, whatever, wherever they're coming from. And so they stand behind Jack and they all vote for him when they have the vote for leader. Um, and Jack is all about power and Jack represents the savage side in all of us, okay? So those are the three main characters that have come up so far. And right away, the boys, many of the boys just took off all their clothes and the, some of them never put clothes back on. And that symbolizes shedding the life that they knew. And now they're in this whole new situation. Um, okay, so in chapter two, so the way that chapter one ended, three of the boys, it was Jack, Ralph, and another boy named Simon, who at this point doesn't seem like a big character at the end of chapter one, but he ends up being a very important character in this story, Simon does. And he's, he's um, one of the choir boys, but he's different. And he's kind of... On Ralph's know, side? He's, yes, I mean, he, he seems like he's on Ralph's side, but he, he seems like he's even beyond being on a side. We'll talk about him more in just a minute. I want to I wanna get back to him. But Ralph, Simon, and Jack go exploring because they need to find out, are they even on an island? Is this, they think it's an island, but they don't know for sure. So off they go and they find out, yes, it is an island. 
when they're out, they come across a piglet that's caught in some brambles and um, Jack happens to have a knife and he pulls it out and he's going to, he's like standing over this pig that can't get out and he's, you know, the knife over it, but he can't do it. And the fact that he can't do it means something. It means that at this point, even though we can see the savage side of him, he isn't there yet. He hasn't gone completely savage or anything at this point. He still has his, he comes from a civilized society and that still guides him in some ways. But we're going to watch him transform as the book goes on. So when they get back to the beach, um, Ralph uses the conch shell to call another meeting to let the, all the boys know what they have found. And so he tells them that there's, this is an island, there aren't any adults, and so we are going to have to figure out how to take care of ourselves. Ralph makes this rule that when they have meetings, only the only person that can talk is the one who's holding the conch shell. So they all pass it around when it's, and, you, and if somebody else has it and is speaking, you can't talk. So what does that mean, the fact that they have this conch shell rule they in the of, context of what this story is focusing on? They're kind of still that? focused on like their past life. Like they still try and follow structures like yeah. a school, like exactly. raise your hand to speak. Perfect, perfect answer. That's exactly right. And that shows how they lean towards civilization at this point, right? Right. So they've got this rule. And then Jack, the more savage one, says, yeah, and if anybody breaks that rule, and he kind of makes a threatening sound or whatever. And so that just tells us a little bit more about Jack, that he is all about power. And, that, and you can just see more and more his savagery coming out. He says, They're, we're going to have rules, lots of rules. And if anybody breaks those rules, and he, and he just sounds very threatening when he says it. So then Piggy says that no one out in the, in the real world knows where they are because their plane was shot down. They didn't get to where they were going. So that is, and he says, we may be here for a long time. And remember, we have boys here from age six to age 12. So you have little kids that would be pretty scared about stuff like this. Then a little, in this chapter, a little boy with a birthmark on his face, he's very timid, but he wants to say something. And so he gets the conch shell and he speaks. And can somebody tell us what that little boy says he has seen on the he island? He's like a monster almost, like. Yeah. A snake thing. Yes. Snake. He says he saw something. First he calls it a snake-like thing, and then he calls it a beastie. And that sounds really weird, right? Like, does it, does it seem like this is the kind of story that's going to have a monster in it? No, it seems just like regular, uh, like a mind. regular world story, not a, not a fantasy story or anything like that. So he brings this up, and everybody kind of laughs at him, and... Um, they say, oh, he's just, you're just dreaming. You had a nightmare. And yet some of the boys are a little like, oh, what if he's right? You know, they're a little worried about it. So this beastie monster thing is going to definitely be coming more and more into the story. So make sure you're, you're clear on what's going on with that. Um, so then Ralph says that they need to build a signal fire. Why, what, what would be the point of that? Who would see it, do you think? And oh, I, need, I need other people besides Logan answering me. Even if you're on mute, you need to unmute and, and weigh in here sometimes. So who else can, who, what else do you think? Um, I and mean, what do you think, who could see them out on this Please. island? Why would a signal fire be helpful? Our plane, our boat, Chris could see. Good, Chris, yes. Yeah, well, mostly because of the smoke. That's right. When you have a signal fire, you need smoke because that's what's going to be spotted from far away, either in a plane yeah. or in a, in a ship that might be going by. So he says he has the idea that we need to build a fire up on the mountain. And so all at once, all the boys are on their feet because, you know, boys love fire and they're all excited. They're going to build it. They're going to start a big fire. So they run up on the mountain and they all start gathering wood, 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 and they make this giant pile of wood. But they don't have matches and they don't have a lighter or anything, any way to start it. But somebody figures out a way to start it. Who can who can tell me what that way was? Can ben, Ben, can you tell me? Huh? 
How are they going to start the fire? Rocks. Okay, so you didn't read it? <laughs> what chapter are we even on? Two. Uh, okay, no, I done uh, chapter one. All right, well, this, this discussion is on chapters two and three, and next week is okay. chapter four. All right, go ahead, um, Parker. Okay, so what they do basically is that they take Piggy's glasses and they shine it through the sunlight to create a fire. They, sh they start the fire with Piggy's glasses. So Piggy gets really upset when Jack takes his glasses because first of all, he can't see without them. And, yes. and also what do Piggy's glasses symbolize or represent? Intelligence. Yeah, and so when they're taken from him, it's like, it's like there's a disconnection that it's a symbolic disconnection um, for him also. Who just, who dropped, oh geez. I have Alexis waiting. Alexis, I'm sorry. I hope you weren't waiting long. I just realized that you were on there. You there? She's fixing audio and- I'm sorry, Alexis. I hope you weren't there long. I just noticed that you were in the waiting room. Um, so we're talking about how the boys in chapter two started a fire, a signal fire, and they used Piggy's glasses to do that. So they get the fire going and it's, it's pretty good, but then what happens with it right away, pretty much? It's our smoke. Yeah, it starts over no kind smoke. of overflowing. Smokey the bear out. was not happy. What? Smokey the bear was not happy. Oh, well, <laughs> in a minute, he really won't be. All right, so um, it soon burns out, and they realize that when they get it going again, what do they need to have happen so that it doesn't go out? More wood. Don't they need to have boys watching the fire? Like they need, to have, the they need to have people whose job, and they can work in shifts, of course, <clears throat> is to make sure that that thing stays burning because you never know when a ship or a plane is going to go by. And so who says that they will be the ones in charge of that? Which yeah. group of boys? The choir boys. That's right, the choir boys. Yeah, the choir. choir boys have also agreed to be what? They're, they're not just going to be the fire keepers. They're also going to be the... Hunters. Hunters. The hunters, right? The hunters. Now, the, the kids have found fruit on this island, but they haven't, that's all they've had at this point. So the, the um, and, the, and now they know that there's wild pigs on the island. So mm -hmm. the choir boys are going to be the hunters and they're going to, they're going to watch the fire and make sure it keeps going. So anyway, it burns out and they, they want to get it going again. And so they they're very disorganized they're they're all over the place they're all acting individually you know doing this doing that making the fire they're not working as an organized group now that's important because when you have a life or death situation like this can you just go rogue and do whatever you want or do you need the group and do you need the group to be cohesive well yeah, the you group need needs the group to be cohesive definitely the group needs to be cohesive for everyone to benefit, you know, it, it, and if everybody's acting on their own, you're gonna have chaos, and that's exactly what happens. So they get the fire going again, and what happens? It's oh, it starts to burn down like trees and catches starts to get trees, out of control, and the fire is out of control. And then, Didn't um, Piggy realizes what? What does he realize? Uh, where is the kid with like the birthmark? The kid with the birthmark that saw the beastie they can't find, he's missing. So it seems like what has happened to him? He was in the forest and when it burned down, killed him. Yeah, it seems like he must have been burned alive from this crazy fire that they built. And so the boy, the re, this is important, the boy's reaction to, oh wait, Gavin. Sorry, Gavin, I'm like, I'm looking at the screen and I'm not noticing who's, who's trying to get back in. Um, so. Gavin, we just said that this big fire, they, they restart the fire. It's this burning, raging fire just because it's everything's so disorganized. And then they realize that that little boy who saw the beastie is missing. So it seems like he's, he's died in the fire. And so their reaction is important because they are, they're upset about it. They quickly just pretend like nothing happened. They put it out of their minds. But think about this, the fact that they're upset about it, think of the theme of the story. What does it mean at this point that they're, they're upset that that might've happened? They're still, they're still not as savage as they could have be. Morals. Good job, that's right. They are still 
they're still showing a tie to morality and and um, and and goodness. Okay, that's that's the appropriate reaction to have if somebody, even if you don't know them, a little child dies in a fire like that. So, in chapter one, they were all determined to kind of recreate the society that they came from that they've lost. They want to recreate that here on the island. But already, chapter two, we're only in chapter two, already in chapter two, the desire to actually go play and just do whatever they want to do at any given time is messing up that original plan because they're they're not acting for the best of the group. They're just doing, a lot of the kids are just doing whatever they want to do. Um, and as you can predict, that is not a good thing. That's probably going to lead to some trouble as they try to survive on this island. Um, you know, the fire is a great example of it. And you can also see that their, their savage instincts are coming out because they're already valuing strength and charisma, which is what Jack has, over intelligence. So it's starting to tip, okay? The way that they just ignore Piggy means something. They don't like Piggy. They think he's a, a nerd. Um, they think he's a fat, you know, a kid or whatever. Like this, they, they don't give him any respect they don't care what he has to say and piggy is the smartest one of the bunch and piggy has some really good ideas but they just ignore him what does the fact that they're ignoring piggy and remember what he represents what does that mean they're ignoring intelligence like they're trying yeah to they're, they're not willing to listen to smart people correct that's showing their movement away from civilization okay so then we go to chapter three and chapter three starts with Jack and Jack, Jack is, is in the forest. Mm -hmm. What does he say, Logan? Jack is hunting and he's trying to catch pigs. Right. So remember how Jack had that pig right in his grasps and he couldn't do it? Well, that is driving him crazy and he has to prove himself that he can do it. And so he's off hunting and he's trying to find another pig and he's, he's made a weapon. What is the weapon that he has made? A spear. spear. Yeah, good. So he's taken a stick and he's sharpened it somehow. And well, I guess with his knife. And he's got this spear that he's trailing as he's walking through the forest looking through for a pig, but he can't find any. And it, it's, he's irritated because he's, he's getting obsessed with about this. So he goes back to the beach. And who does he, two boys are on the beach. Who are they? Ralph and Piggy. Ralph yeah. and? No, and... Uh... It's Simon. somebody we've met, Fire Simon. Ralph, right, oh, yeah. Ralph and Simon. So Ralph and Simon are on the beach, and what are they doing? They're making huts. Good, Chris. They're, yeah. make, they're trying to build huts, but how is that going? Yeah. No one's helping. Uh, well. No one is helping, and they keep falling apart. So they're really frustrated, and, and Ralph is really frustrated. And, and here comes Jack, and... Um, Ralph is talking about how nobody's helping and this isn't working and the, the boys are just off doing what they want to do and playing and, the, and swimming or whatever. And Jack does not, Jack is, you know, right there and he's being told this information, but Jack's reaction is to just start talking about how he needs to get a pig and these boys need meat and all this kind of stuff. So Jack's not even really listening to him. They're not communicating. They're each saying what they're frustrated about, but they're not hearing each other. Again, this is the separateness. They're not working together. Um, let me see if I want to say anything else about that. Oh, oh, Ralph talks about how some of the younger boys are having nightmares and they're having trouble sleeping. And he talks to Jack about that. But Jack doesn't have any response to that. All he can talk about is it's how he poor. needs to kill a pig. It's all he cares about. He needs to kill a pig. He needs to kill a pig. He's becoming obsessed. He is which becoming is a savage. Mm, very good. Ralph tells Jack that he, he is doing all the hunting to avoid the work. Because hunting, come on. If you guys were in a situation like that, what would you rather do? Build huts and, and do organizational things or go out there and hunt something? That's what, you're, you know, that's what your instinct is probably going to want you to do. And so he says, so Jet Ralph is saying to him, you just want to go hunting because it's more fun than having to do this work of, of making these huts for the little boys to sleep in, the young boys to sleep in. You're picking fun over work. But Jack rationalizes it and says, no, the boys need meat. 
But what's Jack's real reason? He wants to prove himself worth. Correct. It's all about Jack. It's all about Jack. It's not about the group. It's not about feeding meat to the group. It's all about Jack. Didn't he say that he he thought he saw a sip and then it turns out Ralph's like, what? Why? Where's the sip? And then he's like, wait, I'm trying to think. And then, um, and then Jack's like, no, I'm just thinking about the pork. I can't remember that part. Was that in chapter three? Yeah, three. I think it was. Okay, I mean, I don't, I'm, you may be right. I remember I just, something similar back to, to that. Me. Okay. That across the lines. All right. So in this beach scene, you can already see how Jack and Ralph have this disconnection, and they also have this like hostility toward each other. They really don't get along. So what might that be foreshadowing? Probably a rivalry that could lead to some serious damage. Very good. Very good. You're exactly right. Um, at this point, would you say that the boys as a whole are more tilted towards civilization or savagery? Savage. 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 You, think, you think they're more tilted towards savagery? Okay. I think it's. I, th I don't think it's a hard tilt, but I think no, it's it, not a hard tilt at all. It's just definitely slightly not. tilted. Like it's it's almost half and half, but that it's so slightly tilted that it gets you kind of off. Yeah, I mean, you but you still see the the signs of civilization. You do see yeah. Ralph and and of course Piggy, but Ralph and Simon doing what they feel needs to be done for the for the whole of the for the best of the group. So now we're going to talk about Simon, because while this is happening on the beach, Simon goes off on his own, and he starts wandering through the woods, through the, the jungle, alone. And he comes across some younger boys who are trying to get some fruit that's too high up in the tree, so he, he helps them. He brings the fruit down for them, picks the fruit for them. And at this point, you'll see that they're, they're calling the little boys little ones. Have you, have you seen that word in the reading, little ones? Yeah. <laughs> So they're calling the little boys little ones at this point. And um, he keeps walking. He leaves the little little ones and he keeps walking deeper and deeper and deeper into the forest. And he eventually finds an area. Can somebody describe the area that he finds? Flower patch. There are flowers. There so are. Just kind of like nicer. Mm -hmm. He finds like this kind of a haven in a in, like a glade, yeah. and there are there are birds. You can hear birds, and there's butterflies, and there's flowers, and it's it's very deep in wondrous. He, he's very it's yes, it's very wondrous. It's very it's a very beautiful natural setting. Yeah. So he is all alone there. So he sits down to kind of take in the scene appreciating the beauty of life that is surrounding him. So what is our impression of Simon at this point? That he thinks a lot deeper than most of the boys. He thinks deeper. And what else does he seem to have a strong connection to? Mostly just... Nature. Who said nature? Yes, nature. You can see that he, he has a strong connection to nature. And he seems more introspective and, and calm and quiet, right? Like, um, he's a really interesting character. So when he sits alone in the glade, in that whole scene, you get the feeling that he just has like a natural, innate goodness to him. Mm -hmm. Other boys, it seems like they know right from wrong, but they know it because they learned it in their society. They were taught. They were taught it. But with Simon, it just seems like it's something deep within him, very naturally. Again, we have this idea of nature and how he's connected to nature, and he's naturally this certain way. So, in this very black and white civilization savagery thing, you have Simon, who's who kind of throws everything off balance because he's this third type of person and he's the only one like that so it makes him different and it makes him and the other boys see the see that difference in him it kind of kind of detaches him in a way from the other boys just like he has detached himself in this chapter and gone off and he is he is alone but at his core it just seems like he is a, a part of nature an independent thinker, more spiritual, let's say. He's, he's an oddball in this, in this world that they're living in. Okay, so almost done. I just want to ask a couple questions. Why do you think it's difficult for Ralph and Jack 
to communicate and to get along? They mostly have different ideals. Go on. For example, one is mostly focused on a savage way of civilization, while one's mostly focused on a civilized civilized. And do you think that they're consciously aware of that about themselves? Do you think that they well, think no, deeply no, about it? No, otherwise they wouldn't have noticed a while ago. Yeah, do you think that they can even, yeah, I don't know how, how deep, what deep thinkers they are, especially Jack. Jack just seems to be all about his yeah. inner instinct of, of uh, what Jack wants and not being a part of regular society and civilization the way they've known it. He, he likes going wild. Um, so with that in mind, where do you predict that their differences are going to take the story? Probably two different sides of the island. Hmm. That's, a good, that's a good guess. That could be. All right, any questions about that section of reading? Is everybody clear on what happened? I, I'm so glad you guys were here because this book is not, it's not easy to pick up on these themes and this stuff um, when you're reading it. It really helps, I think, to have somebody pointing stuff out that, just subtle things that you might not be noticing. And it makes the book so much better when you, when you know these things. And look how many people out of two of my classes are here, just five of you. So it's really good that, you're, that you made the effort to come, to come in, and I hope it helps you enjoy the book more. I think it's a really cool book that, um, like I think I said last week, you'll always hear references to it. It's such a popular book. It's such I mean, a it different book. I mean, it is a literally, literally, sorry, <laughs> literally classic. Sorry, yeah, it's a classic. It. It's a classic for a reason. It's been around for a while, and it is literally still read. Classic, yeah. And it's, it's still enjoyed by people. All right. So next week, we'll talk about chapter four. So we'll do our Next week, you don't have school Thursday and Friday. You won't have new assignments, but we will still have our book discussion on Friday. Okay? And no assignments on Thursday and Friday. Right. You shouldn't have anything on Thursday and Friday, anything new assignments, except for if you have Zoom meetings. How come? I don't know. We had those as two scheduled days off, and we're still having them like that. But... I don't want to lose a week of book discussion, so I'll, st I'll still see you here this time next week, okay? okay? And you know, if you're reading and you have any questions in the meantime, you can always email me and ask me about them. Um, I don't know if you guys saw my post on the wall, but when you email me something, please always write in the subject line what assignment it is. Okay, I get so many things, and sometimes there's nothing there, and all right, it's it just yeah, I, I try to do that with yeah, yeah, a lot of you are doing it, and I give really some context. That. And, um, oh, how about Quizlet? Has anybody, has anybody been going in and doing the Quizlet study section? Yes, I, I actually have, yeah. Okay, for those of you who haven't, that's a, that's a part of every week's work. So you need to go in to whatever lesson we're on, and the first five things listed is called study, and there are five sections under it, and you need to go in and you need to complete them. And once they're completed, when I look at the progress report for the class, it gets a green check. So then I can see who's actually been in there, done it, and completed it. If you just do a little bit of it, you won't get the green check, a little bit of each section. So you got to make sure you get through it because that's a grade for the week every week. All right. And that is all I have. If you have any questions for me, go ahead and ask. But otherwise, thanks for being here, and I will see you next week. All right, guys? All right. All right. Bye. Bye.